up, YouTube? We're back. More wines, more opinions, more fellas. Today, we're going to be tasting six wines from Different Drop. That's how YouTubers do it, yeah? Uh, we're going to be tasting six wines from Different Drop. Uh, apparently, these are their best-selling imports. As always, if you want 10% off any of these wines, we do have an affiliate link with Different Drop. Uh, Tom, lovely dude, lovely wines. We recently launched a little way for you, you to give us money directly. Uh, be foolish not to say about it because love money. Um, yeah, it's called Buy Us A Wine. If you want to buy us a wine, some people already have. Thank you so so much. Let's get into it. I hate myself so much. All right, six wines from overseas that sell really well in different drop. Shut up and play the hits. Pale white, lovely, crispy white wine. Wine number one. I'ma think this is champagne. I'm gonna have a good day today. And it's like petrol and acid mixed together, which a lot of people find really appealing. Wow. Wow. All right, so obviously crystal clear, brilliant clarity. There was a little bit of uh, dissolved CO2 that actually made me think it was sparkling. It is not. This is a dry wine. Its texture is sick. It's almost like, <laughs> how do I describe this? This is gonna sound horrible. Get a can of Spam <laughs> and then like flip it upside down and then fucking one of those ones and it just goes. <laughs> Not quite like Riesling-y, it's got a bit more texture, a bit richer. It is quite neutral, but it's got this lovely kind of food-friendly kick to it. Could be like Suave, it's got that kind of fresh crispy apple texture, minerality, um, freshness kind of combo. Let's stick with Pinot Gris. Pretty grassy, um, best-selling imports. Uh, I mean, if it's imported, I'm gonna say that this is French Pinot Gris. French, um, let's go $42. And I'll have three bottles of that because again, I just want a hug. <laughs> Wine at number two, a bit more colour to this, kind of in that, like, you know, very honeyed golden area. I feel like this lime green thing going on, which is fun. Reductive, but still piercing somehow. Oh, tastes lovely. Fancy that. What a turnaround, 180. Talk about your bad first impression. Definitely a nutty finish. Uh, so I'm thinking like, doesn't really have like the bitter almond thing that Suave tends to have. Stick to actually, I think this is Albarino. Uh, and I'll pay 30 bucks a bottle for it and I would buy three bottles. Uh, like, I love aged white. There is no doubt about it that I love aged white. Just not a lot of aged textural white with some notable exceptions, but this isn't one of them. We can see why it's a very well good selling wine though, because that is just, that's easy drinking, man. And impressive. Shannon. So it's French again. Um, that'll be 45 bucks. And I'll have six of it. Really, I'm not gonna lie, I had this in the first half. I thought I was gonna hate that the whole time, but 180, I'm back in. Um, I like it. I actually really like it. I'm going three. I spent 40 bucks on it. Like, could be, could be Riesling, but it doesn't have the, like, driving acid that, like, you know, European Rieslings do. <laughs> All right, wine number three. Definitely number three this time. That's awesome. Like, it looks like an orange wine, and I, it, it looks like it's spark, it is sparkling. Orange. It's particularly orange. It's particularly savory. Fancy bartender with, like, curled up handlebar mustache. Lighter and orange peel kind of, poof, like, energy. Like, very, very good stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, and much like our year 10 drama production of Hamlet, while at the start it might have been a real inconvenience, by the end of it, we've got some real treasure performances out in the day. And this wine really come through. Congratulations, you're a wonderful young actor. Oh, wow. Okay, okay. Not sparkling, Draw, um, definitely a, a still wine. Wow, like, oh, I'm so sorry. It's mousy back palate. Oh yeah, rich, salty, acidic, great texture. Really awesome texture. I'd happily drink this, a lot. I have no idea what variety that is, but it's cool and I want to know more about it. I don't know who you are, but I want to get to know you type deal. Um, no idea. Give me six because like, it's so cool and interesting that like, I'm just not cool and interesting enough to have a dozen of it, but plenty of customers of different drops. So please, if you're watching this and you disagree, let me know. I want to know why you enjoy it. I'd pay 20 bucks and I'd buy a bottle because it's the minimum I can buy. Slash a glass, if I can get away with it. <laughs> Number four, hazy, but kind of like medium bodied red. Just like nothing, nothing to snort at, just, just a thing. It smells like an office. Like when I was, uh, one of my first jobs, when I was under the impression that I might've been a lawyer, was working in the federal courts of uh, South Australia. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to level four of the federal courts building in South Australia, but that's what this wine smells like. And you can't tell me otherwise. Shout out to Neil, my supervisor back then. Sorry for falling asleep in that financial case one time. Not a joke, really did fall asleep in court. The judge had to wake me up and be like, uh, the court officer will collect the documents. I'm like, ah, oh, sorry judge, anyway. 
being absolutely honest, the palette is amazing. The palette is so good. And I think that's the oak is sort of carrying that flavor along. It is sitting disjointed a little bit. Like there's definitely oak on the nose and fruit on the nose and a few other sort of maybe secondary and tertiary characters going on on the nose. That's pretty red hot. I can see why that sells. It's that midway, juicy, well-priced, probably thing. It feels well-priced. Um, probably like a you know thirty-dollar imported Pinot Noir from I don't know. I think it's Malbec. I've thought about it again. I reckon that's an Argentinian Malbec. Popping off. If you haven't had some Argentinian Malbec, get your shit. Very, very good wine. I I feel as much as I'm going to pay forty-five bucks a bottle for it. I don't feel that this is going to cost me forty-five bucks. I'm reading in between the lines here. But you know, just good. You know, good Pinot. I wouldn't purchase all that much of it. Like when I'm buying Pinot, I'm fucking buying. Like I've got no time for you know, like you know, eh, Pinot. It's either got to be like really screaming good value or fucking epic. Um, so two bottles for me, just for you know, cannon fodder, twenty-five dollar dues. But um, it's good. It's quite good. <laughs> One and five, more red, more violet, more purple, more fun. Grenache, could be Gamay, could be Pinot. It's all made in this sort of similar-ish way. It all kind of looks and smells like this, but that's fine, especially if you're not being charged for it. Like if this one is any less than 50 bucks Aussie, then it's probably a pretty good deal. Like I would happily part ways with money for this wine. Yum, yum, that's fucking awesome. Whoa, easy, happy with $40 for that. Vibrant, fresh acid. Okay, so yeah, yum is my one word takeaway from that one. Uh, dozens, uh, dozens all round. Everyone, you get a bottle, you get a bottle, you get a bottle. That tannin, that tannin, that is, that is some tannin. That is like, I didn't think you could have bigger than Nebbiolo tannins, but you can. Um, uh, this proves it. That's wild that we're having such a primary fruited thing. Juicy fruits. I don't care what it is, where it's from. If it's like a, it feels like it's kind of Spanish blend, but. I really fucking love it. I think this is delicious. Varietally, Nero Davila. Nero. Um, again, sometimes I just enjoy drinking the wines and I let the other guys speak about them because they know more about it. That was just yum. And it's so far probably my wine lineup. I think that is just a really fun wine. Like gonna reward cellaring. It's gonna reward drinking now. If it's not coming at like a really high price point and it's an import, like go hard, like stock up. <laughs> last wine and a little bit worried because like it, you know it's one of those could be a rosé could be red I think it's a red yeah I reckon off the bat this is looking like either Nebbiolo or Sangiovese tell you what though on the palate doesn't really show that at all it's all about those racy cherries and cranberries and cascara and all that kind of light English breakfast tea thing as well. Beautiful tannin too. Um, good, good neb. Good, good neb. I think you know this is definitely worth hanging on to six bottles and seeing how it develops in the cellar. Bit of tannin, bit of savory. So I was leaning Nebbiolo, Sangiovese. I'll stick with Sange on this one. I reckon that'll be $45 and I'll have six of them. I think this is a Nebbiolo, probably like a Lange Rosso, really like a really, really good deal. Uh, I think this would be like, if you can get this for like 40 bucks a bottle, yeah, I'd totally buy 12. There's no doubt that I'm a massive Neb head. And they used to call me the Nebophiliac in school. Uh, but, um, uh, <laughs> um, but yum, I drink the shit out of this. Yeah, delicious, really, really cool. Good value here, really just a good solid lineup. Just a couple of like stocking, cellar stuffers and you know, fridge fillers and all that kind of shit. So let's see what the boys think. Uh, so this time we're looking at Different Drops best selling imports uh, mm. over a period of time. Uh, it was either sort of like old timers or something's popping off right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, enjoyed them. I mean, I'm not surprised. They're the best selling ones from our favorite guys at Different Drops. So Democracy works. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, I thought that bracket was interesting because it's like best selling international or imports. It doesn't necessarily mean the most expensive, right? It's just no. the best selling, I'm assuming. Yeah. You know, so it's a good insight for people outside of Australia looking at, you know, different drop being used as probably the most premier online retailer or indie online retailer mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. in Australia for wine. Being able to see what Aussies are actually drinking, even me as a as like I I didn't know this. Like yeah. I, I, for me, this is an intellectual exercise as well. I thought it was a really cool bracket. I think we'll start out with wine number one. Uh, I thought that this might have been French. I thought suave. That's, I thought suave as well. Mm. It's very yummy, and I bought lots of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's really funny because that's like the only variety. I'm like, well, it's not suave. <laughs> I was like, there's no bitter almond in this. It's not suave. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah, it was cool. I thought this was just like white wine. Like, I don't know if that's something that like to suave. That's it's like, generic occasionally. Yes, extraordinary. Mm. Most mm. of the time. Whoops. Well, yeah. yeah, we're lucky because you know our mates at Franco Bay Wine bring you the best suave in the fucking world, and we sell it here in South Australia. It's fucking amazing. But mm. most suave is this of yeah. just like clean, refreshing, mm. yum, 
uh, you know, 12, 12 o'clock on a Friday afternoon, I'm going to have a glass and I'll, yes, I'll have a second one with my roast chook, thank you. Mm-hmm. You know how there's like, there's beige and then there's like vanilla, which is like not beige, like a nice beige. Yeah. It doesn't taste like vanilla, but it's certainly the beige that you would not back. I, I yeah. thought of Pinot Gris, I don't think right about now, but... Pinot, Pinot, Pinot Gris was my other option. That yeah. was my second. Because I was just like generic white wine. Yeah, 100%. And I've drunk a lot more Pinot Gris because I'm from Australia. Uh, so, how much did you think it was worth? 30 bucks. I had 40 and 12, please. Six for me. $42 for three. How much was it? What? Oh! Oh! I, ha- I literally had this wine the other week. Ass wine. A Certico. Yeah. This is the this is the problem that I'm having with the Certico is that when it's really good, it's interesting and savory and delicious. Mm. But most of the time, it's like now I think it's changing into this because mm. you know commercialization has kind of hit the Greek industry and now it's just like lost its character. Like I don't. If I'm in Santorini, yeah, cool. But like for the most part. Uh, eh? I don't mind that like Acetico is masquerading as Suave and Zinamavro is masquerading as Nebbiolo. Like I kind of don't have an issue with it. Look, this. I'm happy with the Nebbiolo <laughs> masqueration because masqueration, it, masqueration mm. is because it's cheaper. <laughs> it's just called masquerade. The, ne- the Nebbiolo masquerade because it's far cheaper than most Nebbiolos and yeah. almost just as good. But whereas like I don't need more affordable white wine. Fair. <laughs> Fair. Yeah, yeah, There's so much of it. Yeah. Like I wanted to have some character and that just doesn't have character. Number two. Really good. Like, yeah. uh, but like I don't know. Um, I was weirded out. I don't know if it was Betriotis or just um, Sauvignon Blanc. Mm, or was, both. Yeah, I, 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 I was not a fan. I bought three bottles because I felt sorry for it. Um, <laughs> um, Pity <laughs> buy. Pity buy. Uh, yeah, thirty bucks. Like, like it's that. I know exactly what you're talking about. It's like, it's like a greenness, a sapidness that's also had oxidation. Yeah. Like mm. it's it, the wine's seen a bit of age, and it's got tropical juice box energy, mm. passion fruit. Thing. Sounds a good good shout. Uh, I actually it doesn't went have old, acid though. No. I said old Albarino. That's kind of cool. I, I thought, oh, maybe Rusan, like old Rusan. Mm. Seen sort of like this before. Masa. It's Masa. Not, it's, not, built. it's not rich enough. It's not, not imported. I don't know. Imported wines? That's why I went Albarino. That's when Loire Valley Cool Hint. I was there. Well, you went Shannon. Yeah, I wrote Shannon because uh, it sounds like it's from overseas. Uh, <laughs> uh, I thought yeah. I had this like little nutty thing on the end, which like I think I remember tasting some nutty Shannons before. Oh, yeah. like, I mean, we're throwing things on boards here. We may as well write something down. Uh, I had $45 for that wine, and I wanted six of them. Uh, I had 30 and three. I had 40 and three. <laughs> Chardonnay from Santa Barbara. Are you sure it is? If I thought that is... Oh, look at... No, no, that's that's legit. That's, um... That's it. It's one of Different Drops best-selling imported wines. That's so interesting. Oh, we that's... have a lot of people from the States watch the show. I'm fascinated to know. Why do you love this <laughs> if you do? <laughs> like, I'm trying to understand it. Uh, clearly, we we either have got a an old-looking bottle. The cork is Dion, so it's in... in it should be fine. It's, yeah. It should be... It's abs- not like... Ox- it's not right. oxidised. What's the, um, vintage? 2021? 2021. Um, yeah, um, this is just, uh, this has vexed me. Maybe it's, do you reckon it might be maturitized? It That's just tastes like weird. old, old, stemmy, sapid white wine. Yeah, um, yeah, sorry, not for me. Yeah, it's um, a Chardonnay at all. Anyway. And it doesn't look like California Chardonnay. Nah, no, like amazing. Oh, amazing stuff. Like Serratus? God damn, fucking holy shit. Mm. But, nah, it's done, that's, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, anyway, if you want to try it for yourself, 10% off by the code. <laughs> <laughs> by number three. Uh, no garbage. idea hot what garbage. this was. Nah, hated it. Really? Mousy. Uh, mousy? Yeah, I got I got mouse on it. I uh, was mouse. Smelled like butyric acid and vomit. Uh, and it probably is expensive, and I'm so sorry. It's just that. I, yeah. Yep. Now we're here. Yeah. <laughs> no, I got six of them, suckers. I thought it was thirty-eight dollars. I, I got twelve. I got. I, I would happy to buy twelve of this if it was thirty bucks. Mate, I got a glass for twenty because I felt sorry for it too. <sighs> it's, like, it's definitely mousy, but it's not bad, bad mouse. Nah, it's like Stuart Little, dude. Like it's fine for the family to enjoy. Like it's like Stuart. It's like Stuart Little playing in the waiting room of a hospital. So it's like you're not really watching it, but it's there. Yeah, you are aware, <laughs> but it's yeah. wearing clothes, so it's like maybe it's meant to. Be. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like the vitamin C kind of like bitsy lolly. Like I can happily have that with some like some salumi. So, that's so fine, man. It's okay that you have one. If it's thirty bucks with some salumi, I'm happy with that. If it's eighty, fuck off. But like, <laughs> yeah, legit. If it's anywhere north of forty bucks, my arm. Like, oh, it is like vinegar. That's nah, like man. vinegar. That's like apple cider vinegar. The nose. The uh, uh, <laughs> The nose has changed. It didn't <laughs> smell like this before. Yeah. It smelled better. I get where you're coming from, but I still drink this shit. <laughs> what do we got here? Some Nari. What is, what is yeah. that? Wow. 
hieroglyphs. Oh, it's Pheasant's Tears. Oh, wow. So it's Georgian skin contacts, um, but cheaper and not as intense. I'm surprised. I'm surprised because this this one I heard this one plenty of time. Firstly, amazing uh, branding change because I think this tiers have really. I think this must be a different um, iteration tier because I think yeah, yeah most present tier is more expensive. It's like generally like unless they've dropped their price like yeah. fifty bucks. Um, Georgian, the home of Uh and this would have been fermented in Quervery underground, I imagine. Really, really, I mean, cool brand, cool person who makes it. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of trading in this on the back of it being a hype wine. Yeah, mate, one on four. <laughs> <laughs> now, I liked this. I like this a lot. Yeah, I, we're back on four men. Yeah. I did not like this. Dude, oh, fuck's sake. I went 12, 12, 12 on all of these. I love these. I went some 12s down the end here. Uh, I was, I was. Oh, uh, yeah, interesting. Yeah, I remember this one. I was feeling a little bit flirty. I thought this might have been Argentinian Malbec or something. Oh, boy. Start calling some things, but what do you think it is? What? Yeah, I think it's really ripe. Yeah. Hot Pinot. Yeah, I think this is like southern, southern Chilean. French. Could be southern French. Could yeah, be. Yeah, I was, th I was thinking longer. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I'm thinking like I smell this. Yeah. I'm like this is just cheap Pinot. Yeah, it's cheap Pinot. It is 100 percent cheap Pinot, and that's why I liked it. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's great, great. It's also like it was like, in fact, it was really disjointed. Yeah, aromatically and on the palate with the oak level on it. Uh, and I think it's come together a little bit more, even. I'm, I'm, look, it's not the Pinot, like, we've had Pinots on this show that are stonkingly good. That's not in the same level bracket, even the hint of it, but it's really yummy. If I'm gonna buy Pinot, I'm gonna fucking buy Pinot. That's kind of where I've gone <laughs> now. I'm like, I'm not wasting my time with no, like, entry level, like, thing. I'm gonna, like, let's go. Let's go hard or go home. There's other, like, light bodied red varieties yeah. that I enjoyed. Yeah, I really like, like, I bought a dozen of it, but man, I wouldn't call that Pinot if you gave me all day, so I thought it was way too savory for that sort of thing. But, it's Ripe. Super into it. It's ripe. It's ripe. Uh, dozen for 50 bucks. Uh, dozen for 45. Two for 20 bucks. Oh. Ah, it's a big sato. Oh, mate. Man. It's uh, old world looking gamay, and potentially this could just be more peanut. More peanut. <laughs> more more peanut. Peanut. That's amazing. Yeah, wow. From New Zealand. No, I have seen this sort of, st I think this style's dying out in, in New Zealand. Like they have done a solid sort of eight year, 10 year period of making these really extracted, like big cold macerations and stuff. It's not really Sato's vibe. 19 to 26 days on skins. Yeah, okay. So yeah. it's like more than more yeah. Yeah. extractions. I think they're moving in a different direction uh, in recent years. I mean, what's the vintage on that? 2021. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, days are, are somewhat numbered for this style, but I appreciate it for what it is. Give me, give me the gamma all fucking day. Yeah, yeah, gamma like, fantastic. Apologies that I just. Dis disrespected your, your wine so much calling it $25 Pinot, but yeah, not for me. Anyway, uh, wine number continuing the streak for me. Yeah, I love it. Yummy! Love this a lot. I'm really into this. Like, it's got that kind of Grenache vibe that I could just chug. I could just happily chug this. This is fun. Fruit juice, man. Oh, yeah, I like this a lot. Really into it. I'm all about it. I'm absolutely all into it. Mm. Variety call? No, it's not my best. I, I, I just call it a Spanish blend. It reminded me of like a Grenache blendy thing. A lot of like, you know, bright red fruits. Just delicious. And Grenache is a, is a real good call for that. Mm. Uh, potentially Gamay? No, maybe not. Wanted a dozen of it. Really enjoyed it. Probably yeah. my pick of the wines that I would want to drink the most of out of this lineup. Yeah. Uh, 33 bucks though. I thought it might have been a bit. Hey! hey! Magic number. See, this is, this is the wine that hits exactly the value that it should. Oh, this is GSM. Yeah, lovely little uh, Rhone Valley Grenache blend. Uh, delicious, always good. Mm. Um, I've been drinking this wine for a long time. And it, like, it's been kind of erring at around 30 to $40 price for the last decade or so, and it just continues to be delicious. Well, I've never cut your own. What a, what a wine. For 30? No, but then the other Guardi. <laughs> uh, big Guardi. <laughs> big Guardi. <laughs> big Guardi. That's awesome. That's awesome. What a wine. I haven't seen that in years, to be honest. I've not tried that in years. That's looking cleaner and brighter and fresher than I've ever seen it. Last wine. Uh, Decent Neb. Decent ah, Neb. Shit. Yeah. I, looked, I looked at the color and I was like, I reckon this is going to be Sangiovese or Nebbiolo. I went Sangiovese based on. Nah, Neb. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's close quite, but no cigar. I don't think it was quite tannic enough to be Neb, but. Yeah, it's not as serious as like Barolo yeah, Spanish. I think it's a Lunga Neb. Mmm. Yeah, like it could be a Moretti. Um, mm. Like it could be in that sort of vibe, but I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it it was between these two for my sort of wine lineup here. 40 and 12. Six for 50 for me. Yeah. Six for 45. No, no, no. Our Pepe! Oh, no. Happy 
This is quite savoury for um, Voltaline. So this is, yeah, yeah, dude. Voltaline. This is what happens, man. And world's just getting warmer and warmer, and, and Voltaline is looking more and more like Barolo. I can't, right? Yeah, I can't. I can't wait till uh, Switzerland is making some real fine Alpine style. <laughs> 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 it's just all moves there. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like clogs and, and cheese. Drink tannic wine. Mm. Yeah, some cheese. <laughs> wine of the lineup. Oh. Oh. Yeah, we all we were all big clean sweep. Yeah, baby. clean sweep. And I, I uh, for thirty eight dollars, if you're looking for like best selling imports, and that's like a good bargain. It just it just bats fifty. It's just so consistently yeah. fucking good every single year. Very good stuff. Like, yeah, and I'll cool. be honest, I was not expecting a single one of those wines in this lineup. I was not expecting no the most sold wines from different jobs that are imports. Not a single one of those was in my. The head. only one that kind of clicks for me is that. Like that it one is like, sense. of course, yeah. it makes sense. It's it's a it's a great producer, great wine. It's and it has been for a long time. Whereas it's like, wow, people are fucking going hard on the hundred dollar Alpine Neb. Hell yeah, it's fucking sick. Do you reckon people just buying the California Chardonnay because they want to? They, like, it's it's just people. American. It's students like me trying to figure out what the fuck California Chardonnay tastes like, and then they get that, and you're like, whoa, what the hell? <laughs> 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 <Like, laughs> well, and Americans who are watching the show, if you know anything about that producer and can shed a bit of light into what we're tasting. That'd be super helpful. Yeah, please do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers. Ciao, ciao.